Hello Internet! Today we have some beautiful, beautiful coding examples about graph neural networks, a GNN. And I'm having here my SageMaker Studio Lab. This is a free Jupyter Lab where we have some CPU and some GPU available for free. I'm running here on the CPU only version, so it's free for 12 hours on Amazon SageMaker. And let's dive right into it. So at first we want to have, of course, an inline representation of matplotlib, but then we go. We, you know about graph neural networks, a powerful tool for machine learning tasks on graphs. And what we will do here, we will load a DGL provided data set, you know, there's a library, a deep graph library. I already showed you in my last video. We use this library to build a model with uh, some modules. I will show you in a second. And then we train and evaluate the graph neural network model for the specific task of node classification. And I will focus on CPU only. GPU I will show you in a later video. Of course, what we are doing, we are operating on PyTorch. So what we do, we import DGL, we import our PyTorch, and this is done. Now, as you know, and I have also done a video on the graph convolutional network, you know, by Thomas Kipp. Let's just remind ourselves that with graph neural networks, there are many proposed uh, methodologies to have an embedding, and you can use either deep walk or node to vec or a simple combination of connectivity and the node feature. But here we use an opportunity to obtain a node representation by combining the connectivity, so our networking structure, and the features of the local neighborhood. We define a neighborhood for each node. Thomas Kipp, and I already showed you in this video how it is done. We will build now such a GNN and perform the coding. So at first we need some data and there are some data set already operational for us. The Quora data set, it consists of 2,700 scientific publication classified into one of seven classes. So all 2,700 publication belong to one of seven classes. And then we have, of course, a citation network and we have 5,500 links in our data set. And we have, of course, unique words identified 1433 unique words and each publication at the set is described as a zero or one valued word vector indicating the absence or the presence of the corresponding word from the dictionary so here we go it is very easy we have our deep graph library we import from on dgl.data our core data set and there we have it the number of nodes 2700 the number of edges 10,000 the number of features and the number of classes. And now our task is that we do not have a class, a classification for each and every node. We just have a, a subset of node classification and given the structure and the features of the node, we want to now have an allocation so that each and every node in our network is absolutely clearly one-to-one -one identified to a class. So a DGL data set may contain one or multiple graphs. And we have here a simple example that we only have one graph. We will have in the second example, I will show you, we have a heterogeneous graph that has a higher complexity. So let's start. And since we are running here on a CPU, I do not activate the GPU version. You see, just make a command to CUDA and you have the GPU version ready. We have the node features and we have the add features, of course, in a tensor notification because we are running here on PyTorch. And now here we have graph convolutional networks, the GCN methodology. I showed you in my video on the famous publication of the preprint we used by Thomas Kipp in 2016. And you have that each layer computes a new node representation by aggregating the neighbor information. So what we have now, since we have a mighty library, the deep graph library, we import now our graph convolutional class. And what we do is that 
we have our graph convolutional defined already within DGL. And we have now then two layers, if you want, with the input features and the hidden features. And then of course our second is from the hidden features to the output and the output is our numerical classes. We have seven classes given in our data set. And then we just define a feed forward network with uh, activation function. And this is a relu function, of course, non-linearity in the activation function so that our network learns a little bit. And then very easily, you just say, if we have this GCN class defined, GCN is our model with our data, with the shape and with our uh, data set, our seven classes. So if you want to know, hey, so there is the beauty that this is predefined. And if you want, you know, there is the documentation of the GL deep graph library. And there's the beauty that you have also the code over there. And we're looking here at the source code for a graph convolution network. And we go, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we have our source code graph convolution model. So graph convolution was introduced, yeah, we know, by Thomas Kipf, I showed you this already. Now, what we're interested in are the parameters. So the parameters are our in features, then our output features, our norm, the normalization, the weights, the bias, the activation, and if you allow zero or not. Note, zero in degree nodes, well, yes, of course, and this is more or less it, and then you have the code, but since all of this is already defined for us, we have it really easy because now what we do, we have uh, the training of our graph convolutional network. And this is very similar to our other neural network training exercise. As an optimizer, we've chosen here our Atom model. Our learning rate is defined as uh, dot zero one of course you can play a little bit around with the hyperparameters and optimize your tuning but for the moment we have here a range from zero to 100 yeah well, maybe let's the 500 and we have our cross entropy the loss function you're familiar we have a cross entropy and we compute accuracy given training validation and test data set and we save the best validation accuracy and this is done and our model as you know it oh cpu gpu wait a second do i have to oh yeah this is cpu so sorry i have to deactivate my gpu you see how easy it is with uh, the deep graph library so you have a model that's now cpu only and here we go and we have 400 epochs so done you see that the loss is 0 0.004 very nice so this is it. And if you train on a GPU, it will of course be much faster than you just have to activate here the two CUDA. So this is beautiful. We trained a graph convolutional network, of course, only the simple case on Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab for free. There's a beautiful Jupyter Lab environment waiting for you free of charge. You don't even have to provide your credit card details like in the, no in the normal commercial SageMaker. And you might say, hey, yeah, this is a little bit trivial. This is much too simple because we are advanced learners in graph neural networks. And then there's a beautiful, beautiful uh, Jupyter notebook. And I show you the authors. Those authors provided a beautiful notebook for us. So what we do, we start all over again. Just clear all the output that you see that we are really doing it at real time. So again, we have our inline. And then depending now, if you have a CPU only or a GPU accelerator working for you, you will either perform the installation. And of course we already installed DGL and we have also looking forward now that we are on the threshold to knowledge networks, to knowledge network embedding, there's a specific library maintained by aws and this is there's a great community with dgl and dgl as i told you a really powerful alternative to pytorch and now we are working with heterogeneous graphs 
And thanks to the author, those are the author one, two, three, four, five authors. And all the credits go to them. I'm just using here the notebook that is provided by DGL and DGLK. So those are the people who did this genius approach. What we do now here in the second notebook, we apply it on a more heterogeneous graph data. We are also creating the graph in DGL. We implementing now a relational graph convolutional network. You have the archive preprint paper the publication here. And we train the model to solve a node classification task. So the same a node classification task, but now on a much more heterogeneous graph structure in DGL. And as you can see here, we are already close to the swapping the state to a knowledge graph, because you will see here, a knowledge graph has a lot of those parameters that we are looking here at the heterogeneous graph. And of course, there is some, some, some short version for the heterogeneous graph, heterographs. I don't like this, but well, if you see heterographs, this is it. So we have different types of nodes and different types of edges, multitude. And the different types of nodes and edges tend to have different types of attributes that are assigned to capture the characteristic of each node and each edge type. Depending on the complexity, we have different number of dimension we are operating in, and DGL supports graph neural network computation on such heterogeneous graphs. So let's jump into it. Where is our code? My goodness, where is the code you're waiting for it? I, I know. You did it, several graph, citation graph. Yeah, the citation graph, the knowledge graph. Here we go. We cross the border to a knowledge graph because knowledge graphs are inherently heterogeneous. So, hey, that was easy. That was a, a borderline we crossed easily. Again, so the argument, yes, we have torch. Oh, do we have access? Oh, sorry, forgot to execute my cells. <laughs> Not that we're running into any troubles. Of course, we need a, a data set and we do not want to construct a data set, but just use a data set that has been constructed for us, a famous data set. This is the ACM data set. And this is a heterogeneous graph with uh, 3,000 papers, 5,800 authors and 56 subjects. My goodness, we just import our data set. And as you see, we have information now P, the encoding for paper, A for author, C for conference paper, L for subject code, and so on. And the relationship are stored in a SciPy sparse matrix. And you see here all the different keys that are available for us in this predefined data set. Now let's have a code at the paper author relationship. And you see, 12,000 papers, 17,000 authors, 37,000 links, great. And now the beautiful thing is you just say DGL dot heterograph and you input your paper you're written by and the author and of course the data and you can construct your DGL. And structural information, yes, you can print it out. So you have here the note types of author and paper. Those are two notes. Now the edge types between these two notes is only written by, so we reduced our data set for better handling. The edge types, yes, is, and then the number, the tens, and oh, this is nice, yeah. Uh, everything, of course, is encoded, numerical encoding. And so to get the authors to write paper, for example, number one, we say paper number one, and we say, hey, what is our uh, edge type written by? And you see these are our notes. These are our authors written this specific paper number one, given the information on the edges. Yes, then we have, of course, the, the simple case, a homogeneous graph is just a special case of a heterograph, heterogeneous graph with only one type. So heterogeneous with only one type reduces to homogeneous. Well, I suppose you are not amazed by this. You can do this, yes. And then of course, yeah, you can define it and blah. And you can even, if you uh, integrate GraphVis, I have not GraphVis installed currently, so we'll not be able to show it. No, it's not 
pre-installed with uh, Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab. But if you install GraphWith and then you install PyGraphWith, you can have here a plotted, you can plot your things. So now here we go. Graph neural networks. You know, we have three main tasks to perform. The first is node classification. The second is link prediction. And then, of course, you have graph classification to assign something. Yeah, but we are focusing on the first one on node classification in an easy case. So we're just going here easy, semi supervised node classification. And we have our ACM academic graph data set that has been constructed for us. We have now here our data. And then we, we use, instead of the graph convolutional network, the next more complex, a little bit more intelligent way to define the representation of our node, the embedding of our graph. And we use a relational graph convolutional network. If you want to read about this in detail, there's our archive preprint server with the document number where you can find the PDF and study this formula in detail. What it tells us that the message computation and the message aggregation, you know, we're here in a message passing network then within each relationship and you have a pair edge type message passing and a typewise reduction. Now, I don't want to go into the details because again, we have now in our DGL library, we have beautiful function predefined for us. You can go through this. What I want to show you, creating a simple graph neural network by stacking two defined layers. So this here, our hetero or GCN layer. This is the definition of our layer, the class of our layer. And then if we take two layers, and we stack them together, like here, we have layer one, we have our input size, our hidden size, and layer two, and this is again the same class with the hidden size to the output size. And we have our edge types defined. Then we define again, as in the other example, I showed you with the node classification in the Coral data set, and a very simple version that we have here. A leaky ReLU function now, on, so not a pure, but a leaky ReLU function. If you're not familiar with this, it's a beautiful function. Look it up. You will find it immediately. And then when we have defined our class, our stacked hetero relational graph convolutional network model, my goodness, my tongue is breaking. We can say this is our model. Uh, we create the model, output has three logic for three classes. And we again have our atom parameter, our A. Now we have a learning rate with a dedicated weight decay function, five E minus four, great. And then we just do, yeah, let's do 500 E pass. I mean, one, let's do, let's do 1000. No, let's do 500. Let's not go crazy. Uh, we have again our last function to be defined in, as in the old case, a cross entropy. And then you define blah, blah, blah. And let's run it. Let's see. Yes, it is working on a CPU. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. So we see the loss is reducing, reducing, reducing. Beautiful. So two very beautiful code examples. We are thankful to the authors. Those are the authors here who came up with this beautiful code, with this beautiful idea, with the different implementation here as you can see a jupyter lab and i hope you enjoyed this too now finally code example after the last video who have been a little bit theoretical on the side of of league groups league groups implementation and so on for graph convolutional network and different topological issues given the topological space we performed the embedding of our graph neural network in this now finally some code examples and I hope you enjoyed our two little uh, Jupyter notebooks. I will leave the link for these notebooks below in the description of the video so you can download it. You can go to Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab. It's a free Jupyter Lab with a free CPU and or a free GPU. You can run through this, you can enjoy it and you can construct your own heterogeneous graph neural network. Thank you and I see you in the next video.